Over the last decade and a half, fracking has become a contentious issue for many Americans. Fracking and the natural gas it produces has simultaneously been hailed as a perfect transitional fuel for the United States and criticized as a dangerous fuel extraction method that jeopardizes water sources and causes earthquakes. But hydraulic fracturing has been used commercially since the 1940s. So why has fracking exploded within the last 15 years with nearly 13 million Americans living at least one mile from a well? And why has there been such a substantial backlash. Before we go any further, let's quickly clear up why it's called fracking and how it works. There are actually two types of hydraulic fracturing, vertical and horizontal. Vertical fracking has been used since the 1940s and essentially consists of boring down vertically into the earth to hit the desired rock layer and then injecting large amounts of water and chemicals to create fractures in that layer through which oil and gas can flow. Hence, fracking. But by combining hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling techniques, companies in the 1990s were able to drill down vertically to their desired deposit and then drill horizontally along that deposit to maximize the returns from the well. This new way of drilling opened up previously unprofitable tracts of land like the Marcellus Shale deposit in the Northeast United States and was part of a perfect storm of factors that led to the meteoric rise of natural gas as a profitable product for oil and gas companies. Among the various incentives that helped jumpstart the rapid production of shale gas in the early 2000s was the relatively high price of natural gas at the beginning of the decade. So the combination of technologically advantageous drilling techniques and a higher price of natural gas meant that oil and gas companies could drill more at a lower cost and sell it at a steeper price, thus expanding their margins and ultimately transforming natural gas extraction into a profitable enterprise. Unfortunately, the rampant proliferation of fracking wells across the country also meant an increasingly negative impact on the environment. On top of the fact that natural gas is a fossil fuel and burning it emits carbon dioxide into the air, albeit at smaller amounts when compared to conventional oil, fracking wells can contaminate drinking water. While the millions of gallons of chemical water solution used to frack wells is sometimes recycled for injection into new wells, often it's either returned deep into the ground or held in line holding pools that are prone to leakage. As a result of this unintended drainage, cases of contaminated water sources in communities close to fracking sites began cropping up across the country. But anti-fracking activism was generally small and grassroots until Josh Fox's 2010 film Gasland blew the top off the anti-fracking movement, helping to generate a wealth of effort towards quelling the rise of natural gas extraction. The film resonated with people both because it was an emotional plea for help and because it masterfully used what Greenpeace calls a mind bomb, or essentially images that were so shocking that it forced people into action. Shots like this grip the audience both with fear and anger. As you watch a homeowner literally light his tap water on fire, it's hard not to think towards the safety of your own drinking water, while also considering how to challenge the rampant fracking that Fox reveals throughout the movie. Natural gas often masquerades as a transitional fuel from more emission-heavy sources like coal to cleaner sources like solar or wind. But the problem with this justification is that it has enabled and supported 15 years worth of fracking infrastructure. We've essentially locked in natural gas as an American fuel for a number of years to come, which means less focus on building infrastructure for sustainable power when we really need it the most. This video was made possible in part by the wonderful people who support me on Patreon. If you're interested in helping me grow this channel, head on over to Patreon and pledge a small amount of money for every video I release. In return, I'll send you gifts like a handwritten thank you note or an Our Changing Climate sticker. As always, if you like what you just saw, share it around and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday.